Hello, my name is Martin and this is 3D Printing Iceland. In this video I'm going to install the Bontech gears for the Creel cr 10 s printer I have. So let's get started after the intro. So I received the other day the Bontech dual drive extruder for the CR10 and I bought this myself and there's no way a uh, uh, sponsored video or a proper guide on how to do it. It's just a video on how I'll install it and I have the PDF from the Bontech website to help me along but I want to show you my process on it so let's first remove the old extruder. So the first thing to do is to remove the old extruder and remove the Capricorn tube and the cable and here's the filament sensor and that will also be put in a housing so I'm gonna open this one up so inside here is a switch filament sensor is just a simple switch, the filament runs over here and when the filament is runs out the switch opens. So this housing is going to be replaced as well. Now I'm removing the old extruder. Last screw, the motor will come loose. So you don't want to have it to drop down. Now you have the other motor and you have to remove this. So this was the first step to remove everything and you have to remove this by loosening those two grab screws. So the first thing I tell you to do is to install the new gear. You have to orient it in a way that the grab screw is on top. Seems to be a quite tight fit. Just going to use some paper to sand down a small knots on the axle. After the second grab screw, it leaves a little bit of surface. Push it on. It was just uh, some damage on the axle after the second grub screw. And they said, tell you to to leave a one to one point five millimeter clearance from the motor to the gear. So you don't want to push it all the way. You have to leave a small gap. So here between should be a small gap and now I can tighten the set screw. Now this gear is, is on and I think it's in a proper position. And now you take this housing and you put in the, the filament sensor. And then you put in the two screws to hold it in place. run a small filament through. I noticed that uh, when I run the filament through the, the switch is not triggered. It goes underneath so I have to check if everything is set correctly. The filament runs underneath the metal lever. This one should press on this thing here. It doesn't align up properly. So this design must have been from an older version 
of the filament sensor so this is not going to work so as this sensor is not aligned with this housing i have to get in touch with Pontec and see if they have a new model for this but while i wait for that i'm going to install the terminator that was included with the printer and install that on the on the filament sensor cable so i can use the printer without the filament sensor so this is just a snap in it goes on the cable like this so this was probably a different type of sensor at some point and they designed this housing and i'm gonna carry on with the installation just without the, the sensor and we might have I'll just put in the screws in the correct place so the hole for the filament that goes through it needs to move a little bit maybe five millimeters up so if I, I think they provide the SDL for this part and I might just as well have a look at it and, and change it myself they have to update the model on their website I think and I'll see do you have to use different screws <laughs> to place the cover now the next thing to do is to place the motor and it should be turned like this and then you place the extruder on top and that is turned like this you have to be careful because of the gears have to align so now i noticed the hole is aligned with the Pontec extruder hole so what needs to happen the plate itself has to move the hole itself has to be in the same place so I'm gonna investigate this further and see if I can adjust this and print it again now I tell you to tighten up the screws to get all those screws in before you tighten them now you want to install the, the knob that puts pressure on the filament path now they tell you to use those screws that are placed here to mount the extruder on the bracket extruder is in place and now we have to connect the cable and now the cable for the filament sensor should normally be plugged in here but i have to make some adjustments to this system before i can use this and now i can connect the bottom tube Thing is connected so now the filament path is over here and not by the lead screw as in the other design so this is a very nice design and i'm putting filament in so now when i'm putting in filament i don't seem to be able to push it through the Pontic gears just goes into the gears and now I have to connect the printer and extrude some filament to get it loaded and one thing I forgot they say in the manual that you have to change the wire because of the motor connection is different now you have to remove exchange this wire at the end and the wire in number four wire in slot one needs to go in where four is and the other way around and you need to have a knife to get this loose
swap the wires. And they see a really good picture of how it should be. I think this is correct. I'm turning the wheel. I decided to go ahead and modify this part. And what I did was just a very rough cut. I just lowered the location for this part by two millimeters. So it sits more down in the housing. And I did just cut everything down and just that, did that just with my knife. But you really should uh, get this designed and printed out again. But I want to have this installed. So I just did it like this. Now when I push filament through, triggers the switch. This is working. Just installing everything again. Now I can connect the filament sensor. What I found, I can't control the extruder through the menu without having to heat up the nozzle. So I'm just turning on the heat. Now I'm going to load the filament. I really can't push it through the extruder. It just lines up with it. So I have to wait for it to warm up and then I can load the filament. Now I can feel the extruder is pulling on the filament. I can't really shove it in. So that's one thing to take into account. It takes some time to load the filament. Now I'm reading in the manual that you have to insert a new E-step value in the start G-code. You have to do a M92 and then E415. And that is because of the Bontic gears. It's a gear down system. So the motor has to move faster than it normally would have. So uh, they say that you can also update the firmware. And I'm going to have a look at that. In the firmware they say it is uh, default steps per unit that has to change from 96 to 415. I have to have a look at how to flash the CR10S printer. Now it has a bootloader so it should be able to flash it without problems. But I haven't added the configuration file for the Marlin before but I have to investigate that. And now I've got the printer working. What I needed to do is as the filament didn't go through the bottom gears when I was manually pulling it. I had to go into my octoprint and manually feed the filament in and that was quite a pain. I have to investigate further to see if I can manually load the filament without, him, without having to use the computer. And if I was doing it on the menu on the printer, it was happening very slowly because the e-steps are not correct in the firmware. So I think I will find out how to upgrade the firmware and insert the correct e-steps there. So I don't have to have it in the start G-code, but I have loaded up a test file and I'm starting to print and it seems to be printing fine. So I'm not a G-code export or a, <laughs> or a Marlin farmer expert. I haven't edited Marlin farmer, so I will have to look at some YouTube videos and, and see how this is done. But I think for me at least I got this to work. Uh, I'll have to find a workaround for the slow filament loading and I might have to update the firmware for that. Uh, I think the overall installation went smoothly. The, the problem with the filament sensor, the socket that came with the Bondi gear was not correct for this type of sensor. So I just used my extra knife to cut out the, the bed where the PCB was laying and moved it a little bit down and it was not without blood. <laughs> I got <laughs> cut in my finger and, and I didn't film that part because I was just troubleshooting and it was not very good video material I think. <laughs> but uh, I got it to work and so I think for now this will be this video and so I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.